<laughs> Whoa, the bald head is a little bit disorienting even for me. <laughs> egg! Eggs, eggs, eggs. All I want is eggs. Hi. So this is a video for uh, youngsters. If you are over the age of whatever, you got to get out. Uh, stay at your own peril. So this is a video for people who are roughly 12 to roughly 17. That's like a five-year window. Um, and it's a good window. Yeah. <laughs> great window. It's a great window. Uh, room with a view. Womb with a pew. Bitches can suck it. Motherfuck it. You ain't my bucket. Uh-uh-uh, knock it. La, 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 la. Wah, 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 wah. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. Dead pod! Ugh. Sorry I haven't made a video in a while. Just kidding. It was like three minutes ago. Oh, wow. This is a, this is a tour of my apartment, uh, the hotel. And um, I went out to the store in Brazil, Sao Paulo, to acquire some wonderful items. Shoe haul! <laughs> Purple Rain Red Bull. Whoops. Purple rain in my mouth later on to get me through the arduous task of putting on women's makeup. Um, then I got a yogurt drink. Vigor rhymes with rigor. You fucking racist. Uh, it also rhymes with bigger. God damn it. Why, you, why does your mind keep going there? It also rhymes with wigger, which is what I am when I put on a wig. Oh. Qualita shakti day. Okay. So this is, um, okay, I'm actually serious right now. Oops, I'll go over here. I've got a new lease on life because of my death tattoo. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have a little bit of, um, oh, we're going to spill the tea, literally. Um, I'm going to use the teapot as a, as a kickstand for the truth talk. And uh, can you stand that? Probably not because this is precariously balanced. I did smoke a little bit of wacky weed, that, um, but I'm not on drugs for the record, so let's do it. Okay, once again, I'd like to reiterate that if you are, the, if you are between the ages of roughly 12 and roughly 17, um, then welcome. And if you are wildly out of those boundaries, I, I politely encourage you to fuck off politely encourage you to fuck off because you probably have better things to do and you probably already know this stuff. And if you don't, well, maybe you should go look at yourself in the mirror. Um, so the first lesson for kids that I wanted to do, uh, I have a half an hour. The first lesson for kids that I wanted to, how do I get rid of the fucking chat? Well, it doesn't matter. I'm not looking. Um, the first lesson for kids that I wanted to do was about um, the truth about moms and dads and the truth about cats and dogs. So we know what about moms and dads? That biologically, you need a mom and you need a dad um, to create a human life. That's kind of that's kind of basically it, I think. Um, you need a sperm and an egg, for the most part. Now, if we want to get if you want to get dive and delve into the nitty gritty of all of these science, uh, scientific issue, what do you do? You call a scientist. I'm not a scientist, although I could be. Um, I'm just a grandpa with a little weenie. Uh, so, okay. So the, uh, what do we know about moms and dads? Okay. So now, so a lot of kids, I meet a lot of kids because I do meet and greets where the lot of kids are at. A lot of kids come to see me. I don't know why. I mean, I know why, but, uh, and I'm not complaining about it, but so I'm aware that in alternative circles, now this is important in alternative circles on the fringe we have already begun to explore and experience alternative methods of parenting, which means that um, sometimes Joey, sometimes Hunter, sometimes uh, Nightingale, these are th three names of uh, youngsters. Um, Nightingale is a little bit of a hippie name, uh, which is apropos because Nightingale has two mommies and they're both diesel dagger dykes, except they don't exhibit any natural character or any stereotypical characteristics, behavioral characteristics of diesel daggers. Like they don't ride motorcycles. Um, they don't wear leather. In fact, wh while they present a very, um, observable kind of masculine appearance and that they're big and husky and they kind of look like a, a men, um, they're actually, uh, quite sensitive, extremely, um, uh, 
uh, not yielding, but kind of like, they're nice people, okay? Like really nice. Maybe too nice. Maybe too nice. Maybe they don't know how to, maybe they, they lack the stereotypical masculine qualities of being really combative and stern, uh, you know, unyielding, blah, 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 whatever. So we know that alternative methods of parenting exist. And you might have one of those parents, or two of them, or three of them, alternative methods of parenting. Um, and we know as fringy people that there is no moral connection between uh, gender identity and sex. Like, it has nothing to do with morality. It's all just about social expression, social norms, social mores. A more and a norm is a thing that is like an established pattern of behavior within a social group. Um, I took Sociology 101 at Bunker Hill Community College. That makes me an expert. <sighs> uh, it does not, because my teacher sucked. He was fun. Well, he's fine. Okay. So um, the thing about it is, and I'm, what I'm going to try to offer you is that because the, the, I feel a little bit disoriented online when I talk to people who, are, uh, who seem to kind of inhabit a lot of online areas that really allow for the proliferation of any kind of gender identity. So it's really, and quite simply, this, uh, this kind of thing is, is rife for parody because it's almost like, my gender is like whatever I want it to be today. And to an extent, that is true. But, to, but I'm talking about in the larger picture, that can be a little bit dangerous because if you want somebody to take you seriously, um, you have to first understand what the rules that, they're, that are governing their world. You know, we don't have to play by them. Hell no. I don't I encourage that at all. But I, I do encourage us to understand what the rules are before we break them. Because sometimes we don't even know we're breaking a rule. That's the whole point here. By when uh, Nightingale goes to school, she's breaking the rule of having a regular mom and a dad. She didn't make that rule. She don't want that rule. That rule was decided years and years and years before she even went to school and was born. But she needs to know that that was a rule. That's a rule that she's breaking. Of course, she's not breaking anything. But that's the perception. She is guilty of being eccentric or weird or offbeat or cool. You know, it could be cool. I'm sure it is for a lot of people. I'm different. You know, I got two moms. Ah. That's great. Wonderful. Um, so, so we need to um, kind of like keep aware of that. The thing that's, I'm 35, so I'm older. <laughs> <laughs> I'm older than you. Uh, in some cases, I probably might even be, uh, so 12, oh, nearly three times your age. So that means you got to listen to me. The only thing, the only thing that qualifies me for being an expert is that I know every contour. I know every textural pattern. I know every line. I know every divot. I know every crevasse and crevice and nook and cranny of your mom's huge ass. Because I've been alive longer than you, baby. And I've certainly been along, alive longer than your mom's ass. I was there when it was... Forged in the fire of your dad's jocular cavity. Okay. So alternative methods of parenting. Oh, here's the twist. We might, Nightingale might have two moms. And we say, you go girl. And we say, you go ladies, whatever. We all wish them the best. But she does need a mom and a dad. So this is where, this is a trick. This is a trick. This is a trick. She needs a mom and a dad. Of course. This is not, at, see, rep, um... Uh, people, uh, I'm going to say right-wingers, but I'm going to say the more ignorant ilk, or the, okay, let's, oh, I, 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 the less creative folk. That's a better, that's a more diplomatic way. And it's also, I think, more accurate. A le less creative folk are, are, will want to stop us right there. And be like, see, I told you, you need a man and a dad. I mean, <laughs> you need a man and a woman in order to make America great again. <laughs> Yes, they're right, but they're also very, very wrong because you need, a, you need a combination of masculine and feminine. This is also wrong, by the way. Um, so we, uh, uh, energies. So a better way to understand this than this gets like, okay, stick, yeah, whatever, is we need solar and lunar energies. Um, this is also incomplete in my estimation, my like non-expert ex. That makes sense. Um, we're, I'm going to say we need, um, we're going to say we need, uh, what's another word? Fuck. A yin yang. Boom. Estela rota. Boom, bitch. Um, we're going to need yin and we're going to need yang. Fuck you, bitch. Yes, God, coming through with the Chinese wisdom. Um, so yin. 
yin and yang. The, the, so, okay, the irony of this is that we look to China in trying times. <laughs> we look to try, because what has the USA done? It's borrowed money from China, bitch. <laughs> this is hysterical. Okay, so China. What does China have to teach us? Well, for one, yin and yang. I'm sure that the, I'm sure it is not that simple, but we're going to break it down simple for the kids. Um, so yin and yang energies. If you, have a, if you have a mom and a dad, you need yin and yang energies, okay? The truth about cats and dogs and the truth about moms and dads moms and dads is that um it is helpful now you don't need shit that's the that the resiliency of the human uh, human brain and body is that how many of you have a single parent how many of you have how many of my friends close personal friends and lovers have um have uh demonstrated repeatedly over and over that they are they're like beyonce in them in that song survivor they're not gonna give up they're gonna try harder you know they're, and they're not going to diss you on the internet, you know, because their mom, their mama, who was who was dead, who died, uh, taught them better than that from the beyond. Um, okay, so yin and yang. I wrote resilience. We didn't really need to write that. Uh, yang is fire. We can think about it even more simply, elementally. Yin is water and air. I don't know if that's right. Let's just say for argument strength, it's. Um, yin is kapha, pitta. Yang is pitta, and yin is kapha. So it's it's just a you need a the two sides to every story, right? Oh, kenga, kenga, kenga. So pitta is a fiery quality. The pitta comes from um, pitta comes from where does it come from? Kit Kat. No. Pitta comes from, oh, Ayurveda. Um, Pitta people are fiery. Pitta people have a lot of acid in their stomach. Pitta people can, you know, can kind of, um, Pitta people can have so much acid in their stomach that it comes up into their mouths. I had gastroesophageal reflux disease, Cameroon. And it sucked shit. Basically, I got heartburn so much, or gastroesophageal reflux, which is um, the uh, acid and um, ju- the hot, nasty juice in your stomach comes through, up through the esophagus, and and kind of just explodes in the back of your throat. Sometimes, get into this gig, bitch. My pitta was so off the chain and off the hook and off the, off the gag that I would uh, wake up in the middle of the night, three in the morning, and then, and then I would go to the bathroom and just spray fucking Dracaris all over the toilet. Like it is literally, <clears throat> it was literally like Amelia Clark, like, you know, uh, woke me up in the middle of the night and was like, I need you to kill the toilet with fire vomit. And it was crazy and it sucked shit. I would puke it up. And it, when I puke, I, I break blood vessels in my eyes and it goes through my nose. I don't know. I don't know if... I wasn't wearing a wig. Okay. So that's pitta. Kapha. K-A. Um, pitta. Kapha. So kapha is... I'm only going to say a little bit about kapha because I actually am really concerned that I'm not right about this. So K-A-P-H-A is a relaxed, easygoing... Kind of like, uh, too much kapha, we're fat as hell, we never get off the couch. Too much pitta, we burn everything around us, including ourselves. <laughs> um, there's another one, and I don't remember what it is. Does anybody know? So this is kind of a dualistic thing I'm working for, so that's why the trifecta is not very, it's not the most perfect analogy. What am I eating? Oh, I'm eating Kit Kats. Hi. I always pinch my nose when I vomit for that reason. Daydream anthem, damn. Humpty Dumpty, yeah. Vata, bitch, work. Now, what's Vata? I might have to abandon this whole thing, right? To, but but Pitta Kapha and Vata is uh, those are great Ayurvedic energetic um, bo- bo- bodily qualities, which are really uh, uh, I love Jade Thirlwall, which are really um, uh, wonderful to read about. And um, you can get tested for the... Uh, I'm a pitta person, so I have the, uh, the preponderance of pitta. In my constitution, I've been... Uh, vata, is it two T's? I feel like it's probably two T's. You're probably right. I feel like you're probably right. 
doesn't matter. It's Sanskrit, I think. Who fucking cares? I do. Um, I have a challenge for you. You're in Brazil and you're eating Kit Kats. Mama, you are a fucking time-traveling truth teller. You just went right to my prison and told the truth. Okay. Can you pick... Can you pick our eyeball? Is that a Zen koan? Okay, so we know that in our lives, getting back to cats and dogs, getting back to yang and yin, um, get, getting back to opposing um, energies, without, so, without trying to sound too new agey about it, because we're trying to really understand what it is. Um, the tendency to get too new agey about it is that we go so far down the rabbit hole or so far through the wormhole or so far in outer space or in our own inner space that we kind of forget wait a minute, how is this applicable to my life and, and how, can I, how can I allow it to be a therapeutic check-in, um, a, a self-monitoring tool? How can I allow it to be um, a practical line of thinking that is going to benefit me now and it's going to benefit me in the future, perhaps? And it's, it's going to deepen my understanding of what I need to do, how I need to be... Jesus Christ. They're coming for me, Barbara. Um, so that's that. And then um, you have to look at your deficits. Okay. My dad. So for example, I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a, uh, shit, I got to go in a little bit. So I'm going to do a, a quick rundown. All the, the, by the way, this is also for, this is primarily for kids. And then secondarily, it's about me. If you're here by accident, I don't know. Go away. Ugh. Um, so mom and dad. So mom is a cat. Dad is a dog. The funny thing is that the funny thing is that my parents are reversed. My dad's a cat. He loves dogs, though, and I don't think my mom would call herself a dog or a cat. I don't think they would think of themselves as either. But for the for the purposes of personal revenge, I am going to swap them. Okay. So right off the bat, we know what that what you see isn't always the truth. Thank you, Tatiana. That's the fir that's the underlying. So the the. <laughs> Tatiana's wisdom as a drag philosopher lies in her ability to do it unintentionally. Um, she is a wise bird. And she's also a fruit barn. Not to mention a wagon wheel. Um, so uh, my mom is a dog. So the truth about cats and dogs, the truth about moms and dads, is that often they are rever reversed. We know it has nothing to do with her pussy mama. We know it has nothing to do with his dick. It does. However, it do what you see isn't always the truth. Sometimes things are as simple as they seem because people have allowed themselves to decide that they are absolutely as simple as they seem. So when we say, no, things are as they seem, what I see is the truth. Well, guess what? The good news is your life just got so simple. The bad news is you're dead wrong. Okay. Um, okay, here we go. So mom is, uh, what my mother taught me compassion. Okay. Introspection. Emotional investigation. So these are all, um, these are all abstract. Well, compassion is a very real, compassion is very real. It's not too, not too abstract. Introspection is where we go deeper. So these, these are all airy kind of, um, their journeys through the non-material. My dad taught me discipline. So my dad was unyielding on one thing. My dad's a pussycat, okay? He's a, he's a cat, he's a pussycat. Like, he's not a pussy, but he's a pussycat. He is gentle, he is, um, he's warm, and he smiles a lot, and he's lovely, and he sleeps, he always takes naps. Um, he always takes naps because he works too hard. And he, um, he taught me, the only thing that my dad was unyielding on when I was growing up was, you have to do something physical. And that was a huge bone of contention. Um, to mix our metaphors there, um, because I didn't want to. And discipline is all about that. Discipline is all about redirecting the mental patterns when we're confronted with a very clear and uh, shitty obstacle, such as the lack of desire to perform an activity, and then we jump over the hurdle. And we always do it tired and non-gracefully. But guess what? When you hit the finish line, Motivation Monday! So, discipline. And then um, he taught me grace. So grace is, is a, one of the byproducts of discipline. 
So Grace, you think, oh, my mom. Grace, you think, oh, my sister, her middle name is Grace. No, no, no. Dad taught me Grace because through kata, so he's a martial arts master. <laughs> That's like, a, he actually is. It's so funny to say out loud. Um, and then, uh, and he taught me, I taught myself, well, he guided me into teaching myself how to perform kata, which is form, the form of fighting, not actually fighting a person, but it's like, if, uh, it's like a violent ballet with just one person, <laughs> a solo fight. Um, so I learned grace because grace, if, if you're a ballet dancer, grace is groomed in the rehearsal studio, right? When it looks effortless and when it's graceful, that's because the person is strong as fuck and they know their, they know their steps. When you do it, when you do something, if like you grab for the coffee pot every single morning, 20 years into it, if, if everything's kind of okay in your life, it has become the most efficient, graceful little activity. You know how to reach for one thing with one hand and you don't make any unnecessary reaches. You pull the cupboard open with one hand and you remove the coffee filters and then you did, 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 did. and it becomes like a little ballet and it's graceful repetition. So he, um, also, uh, the, uh, repetitive, uh, so physical investigation is the last one. Now my mother has more influence over me because we have a stronger relationship just because my dad is what? St uh, S. SST, that's good for me. I want to have sex with my father in a mythical sense. We're all looking for our fathers or mothers or a combination of the two, according to some crackpot. Was it Freud or was it Persephone or was it Judy Dench? The world may never know. Um, strong silent type. Strong silent type. I love the strong silent type because what? I'm a fucking blabbermouth bitch. Because emotional investigation involves a lot of verbiage. And this emotional investigation on my, from my mom happened in the kitchen. That's where all the good talk happens. I don't care if you're black, white, or Mexican. Um, the, the decompressing happens in the living room. Discussion happens in the dinner table or the dining room table. But we didn't have one of those. We, we did, but we didn't use it. Um, so, okay. So... Compassion, introspection, emotional investigation. These are the qualities of a good mom. Discipline, um, grace, and physical investigation. This is incomplete, of course. These are just the few, these are just the top three qualities I gleaned from my parents. Physical investigation, meaning um, repetitive. Go to the gym, go to the gym. This is the easiest way to discuss, discuss it. Um, Oedipus married his mom. I know, I know, I know, but it's just because I'm gay, so. Um, okay. The, oh, also when you get, see, because here's the, here's the whole point of this. Sorry, we'll go back to the beginning. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, discipline, grace, physical investigation, strong, silent type. Okay, strong, silent type. SST. Sexy, shitty teacher. Just kidding. Um, and then, uh, uh, I have I don't have a good one. My mom is um The Rock. The Rock. My mother is Dwayne The Rock Johnson. She's uh, Dewanda The Rocka Johnsona. She's uh, I have a rock and the strong silent type. Can you think of any two more reliable uh, archetypes? <laughs> also, I, I mean you could you could think of um, you could th and they could be alienating, of course. So it's like. You're, you're, you're caught between a rock and a, um, a quiet place. Um, a rock in the quiet room. Ooh. I went to a mental hospital once. Coincidence? I think not. Uh, okay. So that's what we got going on with the truth about cats and dogs, the truth about moms and dads. Uh, for queer folks, and this is for queer kids. These, these are lessons for queer kids. They're really not lessons for anybody else. If anybody else can take anything from them, I say... Hurrah, hooray to you, but I don't, um, I don't really want to hear from you, other than if you want to give me a dollar. Um, so uh, we're looking for a balance of masculine and feminine, incomplete, but it's a good way to start, uh, that's a good way to, um, masculine and feminine, actually, uh, male and female uh, in qualities. And I encourage you all to watch Courtney Act's really wonderful uh, three minute video about gender and gender identity and the difference between biological sex and gender identity because that bitch fucking breaks it down in the easiest way understandable. There's a lot more under that iceberg for us especially, but that's a good start. And then, um, so we go, we get money from China. China gives us an idea. They give us an uh, old one, yin and yang. 
Um, and then also we can kind of, uh, we can uh, add a, a few more vegetables to that burger, which is pitta kapha and fatta from India. And then, um, so the, if, we are, if we're looking at stuff from India, we're looking at stuff from China, we know it goes way, 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 way back. So we can't be too glib or nonchalant about throwing those terms in there. There's huge, huge histories. People devoted their entire lives to the recording with their hands and in ink of those histories. And people got into fights over it, big fights. Huge fucking fights! And then, so we make a list. What are the qualities of my mom and dad? Do I have a mom? Do I have a mom? Do I have three moms? Do I have four dads? What's going on? Why am I wearing these bikinis? Uh, if you have, so make a list like this, M and D, my mom, so the cats and dogs. First decide if they're a cat or a dog. I decided that my mom is a dog and my dad is a cat. <coughs> it's just keeping it playful. It doesn't really matter. And then I listed the first three qualities, the most important ones, or, the, or just say the first three. Now, it's going to get a little heavy for you guys because I'll do a simple one right here and that's the last thing we'll do. I'll say mom is a cunt, okay? And dad is dead because he died or he death desertion or divorce the three d's that's for dad Terrell van horn um dead deserted or dv'd deviated from the script the script was till death do us part why'd you leave dad why'd you do it where did you go and why can't i find you <laughs> that's dark okay so i'm gonna say mom is a cunt She's a mean bitch with an ugly heart, but she has great hair, great hair. Like her hair is off the hook. Okay, dad, gone. I don't know and ghost. Okay, so that's depressing, that sucks. If you are in a situation where your life is not immediately threatened, say, your mom is a mean bitch because she fucking beats you every day. If that is not the case, um, uh, we can start. If that is the case, I encourage you to contact authorities, whether that is a friend, a family, a fa another family member who is sympathetic to your well-being and your health, um, or, or, or whatever. You need to get out of the house like right now, like yesterday. All things being equal, that in meaning that we have um, access to a general level of stability from day to day, you know. Um, let's try to make this good. Let's start with dad because he's dead. Or gone. Or divorced. Let's see he's dead. 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 Um, gone. I don't know. Literally don't know anything about him. Ghost. The movie Ghost. Boom. That's the best thing. You watch that movie right now and it's amazing. Whoopi Goldberg won an Oscar. Um, and then mean bitch. Mean bitch. You fucking bitch. So mean bitches are fun on TV, not in real life. Everybody fucking knows this. If you're a mean bitch in real life, you suck. You suck shit, actually. Like, you suck the most fucking shit ever. But mean bitches in movies are fun because we can allow ourselves the luxury of, of what it would be like to be a mean bitch with an, uh, mean bitch with an ugly heart. Mean person with an ugly heart, like Romy said. Mean bitch, ugly heart. Um, so one thing that you can do to really get under the skin of a mean bitch is um, taunt them with a pitch-perfect parody of themselves. So if your mom's like, Oh, hold on. Joan, I told you to make your bed or I'll give it. You know, whatever. Then you just say, Mother, I said I won't make... You know what I mean? You just meet her on that level if she's not going to actually hit you. And that's fun for her because she has great hair. And people with great hair give a shit. Um, I have no hair. That means I don't care. And uh, so don't listen to me. But if you still do want to listen, uh, listen close. Uh, great hair that is a gift. Great hair is a gift that people give to the world. Um, if they're too obsessed about it, that just means they're too narcissistic. But if they dial it back, great hair is just wonderful to look at. People who dress up for the day, they do a public service. We don't all need to dress up. I, sh I certainly don't because I dress up at night for work, bitch. Um, but it's a public service. Um, great hair is hopeful. It says that I... I um, I hope something great happens tonight. I want to look good for it. Great here also says, um, <laughs> I hope there's a tomorrow when because these these roots will grow out like another like cent, half a centimeter and that's when it really looks good. <laughs> so, you know, stuff like that. People care about their future and care about their self-esteem and people around them, you know. You have great hair. Flip side of that is also uh, people have, uh, people braid their hair and stuff 
who want to dominate the world, like Daenerys Targaryen. So let's hope that your mother, the great hairdo, the great hair stylist, is uh, not a total cunt. And that's all the time we have for him. So um, uh, uh, we're, we're going to start in Los Angeles, in Los Angeles, California, uh, Burbank. There's plenty of parking. Uh, it's very flat. It's in the valley. It's hot as shit. Uh, th there's going to be an after school program, uh, maybe on a Tuesday. I'm thinking around six to seven. So that if uh, for kids, this is for kids, this is for kids. Um, it's for the ages of 12 ish up to 17. If I hate it, I'm not doing it a a anymore. I'll do, I'm going to do one and see how it goes. And, um, but you got to be local. You, you got to be local. If you're try if you convince your, um, if you convince your parents somehow to drive you in from, um, Tuscaloosa, Alabama or something like that, uh, you're crazy. And more importantly, your parents are crazy. So you got to stay home and figure that situation out. Um, but if you are local in a reasonable distance and you want to come, I'll do it for three people. If three people show up, we're good. Actually, that's preferred. Um, but uh, the the it's uh, we can fit maybe eighteen to twenty. It's not a big space, but I just want to I want to um, have fun. <laughs> um, I'm not a raper. I am certainly not a fucking child molester. You can get that straight. Um, and and oh, which brings me to my next point. Um, it's just for sissies. It's for girls and sissies. It's for queer girls and sissies. Um, if you're a straight boy and, and you got no problem figuring that identity out for yourself and you're an ally, that's great, wonderful. You're wonderful. Go, you know, go to hockey or whatever. Um, but this is for queers, um, queer girls and boys and sissies um, who uh, want to hang out and want to maybe talk about some alternative perspectives. Um, and it's going to have a curriculum. We're going to, I mean, we're really going to have a discussion. We're going to shoot the shit a lot too. Let's not get it twisted. Um, but, uh, we're also going to meditate for three minutes in honor of Jasmine Masters. If she ever wants to come by that guest, oh, she'll be the associate adjunct professor of your mom's huge motherfucking ass. Um, and we will all bow to her literally. Um, so, so that's the tea. It's going to be in December. Uh, I can't, I gotta, um, it's going to be December. And then I can't figure out when yet, though. I try to do it on a Tuesday because I took a course in um, yoga from Barbara Baina on Tuesdays. For, to his tu teacher Tuesdays. Tuesdays was for teachers. So I'm trying to be a teacher. This is what I'm doing on Tuesday. Okay. Um, oh, sh a show tonight. Oh, oh, ooh. Ah. Uh, T-shirts. Speaking of Taco Tuesday t-shirts, uh, Taco Tuesdays and teachers, uh, t-shirts are so on sale. Oh, man. Oh, wow. We've got so many t-shirts. Okay, yeah, I, it's a whole suitcase. I mean, it's a whole suitcase. I'm moving, and I, I'm moving. My, I'm moving from a, a different house, moving to a different house in Los Angeles. So, um, I, I need to literally get rid of these t-shirts, and I can't give them away. I mean, I'm, I'm giving away for next to nothing, though. Um, they're only ten hay ice, which is like nothing. I think it's like three bucks. Um, it's seventy percent off. I think it's about three American dollars. You better fucking snatch you a piece. Holidays, bitch. Get it for a fat friend who died three years ago. It doesn't matter. Like, just snatch one up. They got plastic on them, too. Not good for the environment, but it tells you what size it is right in the corner. Um, and then, uh, eat shit and die. Thanks so much for watching. Okay, some power, though.